Would you join me with a word of prayer? Eternal God and lover of our souls, in every generation you call people to follow you. Through the power of your Holy Spirit today, open our hearts and our minds to your call. Help us to know and love the sound of your voice. Make us aware daily of our need to be quiet and still in your presence. And teach us to listen so well that we desire to hear your voice above the sound of our own voices. Make us passionate for the times with you in listening prayer. And then make us eager to respond in loving obedience so that we can see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It comes as no surprise to any of you, I'm sure, that most people are not very good listeners. I mean, how many of us really, really listen? Oh, sure, there's lots of people, and I'm guilty of being one of them, people who nod at the appropriate times and uh, grunt uh, blow the surface mm -hmm, as if they understand and comprehend or agree. But most people, you know, when they're doing that, they're really just thinking of what they're going to say next. I've even heard it said, maybe it's a, a rumor I shouldn't pay any attention to, I've heard it said that there are people who aren't very good listeners when it comes to hearing Sunday sermons. But I know that doesn't apply to any of you, so I should just go on. But for good communication to occur, a, mes a message has to be both clearly conveyed using words and actions that are then heard and understood by the recipient. Now, many of us spend years in the classroom and we use it uh, during our lifetime in an effort to learn how to use words effectively to communicate. But listening, listening seems to be a lost art. Today we find out how important listening really is, especially when it comes to our relationships with God. You know, Epiphany, the season in which we find ourselves right now, is the season during which we recount the revelation of Jesus' glory when he lets people see his grace and his mercy, his love and his forgiveness. Today we're going to examine how important it is and what a blessing it is to listen to Christ. So Lord, make us attentive. In our Old Testament lesson, we encountered the prophet Samuel as a young boy when he was working in the temple under the supervision of Eli, who was both a priest and a judge. And verse 1 of this passage said that the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. God had chosen, deliberately chosen, not to speak to his people. But we ask ourselves, why would God be silent with his own people? Well, you see, during this time in Israel's history, the Israelites were living very wickedly. No one was very interested in hearing or listening to the word of God, to his prophets, or to the word. People were too busy living their own lives, too busy breaking God's commandments. The last thing that they wanted to do was to take time for listening to a prophet speak the word of God to them. And so the word of God was rare during those times. Is the word of God rare in your life? How often do you really listen to the word of God during public worship? where God's word is read and proclaimed. 
What about in your private life? Are you too busy in your private life to have a devotional time with God? Or if you do, do you zip through it so that you can get on to the more important things of life? Now, most of us would agree that prayer is a very good thing, right? Our problem, though, is usually our prayers are more about us talking to God than taking time to listen to God. You may know through your reading of God's Word that Christ seldom reveals His glory to those who are doing all the talking. In our first Samuel reading, we find that Eli and Samuel were both very busy serving in the temple. But friends, being busy for the Lord doesn't equate to a relationship with the Lord. Verse 7 says that Samuel didn't even know the Lord because the word of the Lord hadn't been revealed to him yet. See, God was still a stranger to Samuel. And that may even be the case of some who are listening today. God is still a stranger to you. We find ourselves too busy to listen. But how many successful relationships do you know where one person does all the talking? We keep doing religious things, wondering why we don't feel intimate with God, why we don't hear him speaking to us. And so God just remains a benevolent provider, and we never come to know him as well as he invites us to know him. But what happens when we stop and we listen to God? God called out Samuel three times, but notice Samuel didn't know that it was the Lord. Finally, Eli figured out what was going on. That after years of not hearing the word, the voice of God, that Samuel was the one to whom God would speak. So after the third time, Eli told Samuel that if he heard the voice again, he should respond. Reply, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And from that moment on, God spoke to Samuel on a regular basis. And you know why? He spoke to Samuel because Samuel listened. He came to know God for who he really is. And Samuel became a prophet who everyone in Israel respected because everyone in Israel knew that God was speaking to Samuel and Samuel was listening. Here's how it is with us. <clears throat> we don't get to know God better by doing something difficult or complicated for him. If we want to know God better, we do that simply by yielding and listening to God. Have you been listening this morning? It's a blessed thing when we listen. Did you notice what happened in the gospel lesson this morning? Nathaniel was told about Jesus by his brother and his, his response wasn't exactly that of an eager seeker. He said, how could anything good come out of Nazareth, that forsaken village? But then he went and he met Jesus, and he listened to Jesus. And Jesus revealed just a small quantity of his power when he told Nathaniel that he had already seen him underneath the fig tree. And that in Nathaniel, there was a person in whom there was no deceit or guile. The more Nathaniel listened to Christ, the more amazed he became. 
Finally, after listening, Nathaniel could say, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Have you heard the voice of the Lord this morning? Did you hear the voice of God as we sang the hymn? You'll have an opportunity to hear the voice of Christ many times during the rest of this service. In a few minutes, we'll confess our sins. You'll tell God that you've disobeyed him in thought, word, and deed. In essence, you'll be confessing to him that you haven't really been listening to him as you ought. Pay attention to what God says to you after the confession of your sins. Because we'll hear God tell us that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take away all our sins. God will tell us that because his son, Jesus, completely forgives all of our mistakes and all of our sins. Will you listen to God as he speaks to you and says those things? Later in the service, God will speak to you again through Holy Communion. Now, what will Christ say to you then? This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do you realize that when you hear these words during communion, you hear the voice of Jesus Christ? Will you be listening? Christ is telling you that everything is right and good between you and him. That there's nothing that you've done that can stand between him loving and accepting you as you are. These wonderful words of faith are words that we would like to know and speak every day to Jesus. What an amazing God that he would give us that kind of faith to those people who listen to the word of God to the voice of his son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit. What an amazing God that he asks us to do nothing more than to listen all he asks us to do is to respond as Samuel did. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Jesus told Nathanael that you would see greater things than these. Do you realize Nathanael eventually saw Jesus raised from the dead? He saw him ascend into heaven. And just a little while later, he was empowered with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As we listen to our Lord, as we spend time in his word, we're able to see and hear these same wonderful things. To listen, to listen like that means that you've got to stop doing all the talking. Let listening be one of your first priorities in 2021. The blessings that you will receive are life-giving a renewed understanding of God's forgiveness and love for you. Restored and strengthened faith and a desire to commit all of yourself in gratitude and service to the Lord. 
May these words speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Be your prayer from this day forth and forever. Amen.